Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video, and I've selected my main. If you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. I have a link down in the description, and it's going to be the Restoration Druid, and I thought, why not go over the top 10 arena compositions for Resto Druid at the start of Shadowlands in my mind. These are the compositions that I've got my eyes kind of glued to, and I've ordered them from 10 to 1 based on the priority of the ones that I would really like to check out. I'll talk about their strengths and their weaknesses and some of the awesome components of those compositions. So let's get started here. We've got the 10th place composition for the Restoration Druid, the TSG, the Arms Warrior, and Unholy Death Knight. I do feel like Frost Death Knight in this composition with a Druid healer isn't as favorable. Druids are still kind of the sit back, drink, retain your mana, late game healer. Um, they're not the setup based healer like a paladin or a misweaver monk, uh, which would synergize better with a frost death knight. In my mind, I see unholy working out better for this because it's going to bring a lot more consistency to the composition. And between the arms warrior and the death knight, they're going to be able to pin very high mobile targets like mages quite easily. Abomination limb, spear of bastion. I wouldn't want to be a mage against this composition in particular. Uh, it's going to be a nice little revenge for the cleaves because historically this is a comp that never wanted to see a mage we might see a role reversal for that but that's coming in at number 10. number nine we've got the wind walker making a debut here and his will be playing with a frost death knight i do think that the synergy between wind walker and frost death knight is much higher than arms warrior which is why i would recommend frost over unholy uh, with this particular matchup Death gripping into double leg sweeps into chill streak combos is going to be very important with this composition. And it's again going to be just like an anti mage. Some of the downsides I see of this is due to the prevalence of Shadow Priest and the durability, more importantly, of Shadow Priest. I feel like this is a composition that may actually struggle to hurt them. And also, the Shadow Priest is going to be doing a ton of damage. Shadow Priest is one of the few specs in the game on my Restoration Druid that I'm kind of significantly struggling to heal against. But this still has really good components in it with the Venthyr Covenant on the Windwalker Monk. You just summon in a bunch of images that start just punching the crap out of everybody. The Death Knight will do a good job of keeping all the targets next to those images. And you have really these really high threat moments that you can allocate either all of your cooldowns, maybe just try and win in the opener, or you split them up and try and bait things and play for a later game kill. Uh, but it's a composition that I think will be strong. Number eight, we've got the Arms Warrior and the Elemental Shaman for the Restoration Druid, a classic, a staple Resto Druid comp for many a eons at this point in the game. Uh, Elemental Shaman still retain it as a main hybrid specialization, get Flame Shock up on all their targets, proc Lava Burst, run around the pillar and Ghost Wolf and try and heal themselves up. I've been playing Enhancement a lot on the beta, which is not Elemental, but the main thing I see that's very interesting for Shaman and Priest at the moment is that their healing conduits and their healing legendaries for their class, right? So the rest of Shaman in this case are actually very strong. So there's an Earth Shield legendary that I would actually recommend for elemental and enhancement. And it plays into this composition's strengths a lot, which is just do damage and don't die. Um, so in my mind, you may want to really look at the healing conduits and the healing legendaries if you're an elemental Shaman or Shadow Priest, because they are actually a lot more insane when it comes to PvP than your actual specializations legendaries and something you may want to note. The Arms Warrior is going to provide a lot of protection. In the past, this composition would have struggled with things like Rogues um, due to Elemental Shaman being fairly easy to kill uh, for an Assassination Rogue, but Arms Warrior with Intervene and Mass Spell Reflect and Grounding Totem on the Elemental Shaman, this is going to be so annoying for teams like Rogue Mage that otherwise kind of rolled over a comp like this to actually get stuff going. So in my mind, it's going to be a powerful composition and the reason i'm ranking the cleaves lower on the list you may have noticed is i think we're gonna have a bit of a caster heavy meta which is a bit of a surprise um at the start of a new expansion it's usually dominated by melee dps but i i think we're gonna see a change here and we'll get to that let's move to number seven We've got the Resto Druid Windwalker Shadow Priest. You can see this is the hybrid compositions, bringing in melee and ranged. I've basically just taken an S tier ranged here and an S tier melee specialization and just slapped them together. Um, in my mind, though, Windwalker, not 
better than other melee. It's on the same tier, but it's falling slightly behind. This is, again, a good composition because of the Venthyr Covenant for the Windwalker Monk, and because you have Touch of Death as an Execute and Shadow Word Death as an Execute. So instant crowd control from the Shadow Priest with Psychic Horror and Silence, massive cooldown damage with the Venthyr Covenant. If you get a target low on health, they're dead. There's no way they're surviving. They're going to get Shadow Word Death into Touch, touch of Death, and they're gone really powerful composition that can flex between doing just damage to everything swap around or just focus down and isolate a target it's going to have a ton of play styles built into it and it's also really powerful number seven on the list here for the resto druid Number six, we've got the Warlock Rogue, and I've put a couple variants here. People are significantly underrating Assassination Rogue. Obviously, Subtlety is maybe one of the best performing specs in the game, which is why I was a little bit hesitant to recommend it, because I feel like it's overperforming so much that on release, I don't know uh, if, if it's not if it's going to be nerfed. I was going to make a list um, with my thoughts on, let's say if Shadowlands came out tomorrow and the game is as the game is, make a list of the top five specs like that if you're interested. So that'll likely be the next video. But in this case here, I've got Subtlety uh, with Resto Druid Affliction or Destruction. I think that D Subtlety sets up both of these specializations up great if you wanted to play the Destruction or an Affliction. I'm a little bit more curious to see how Affliction performs just because we've seen so much of Destro, but it doesn't mean that Destro is bad. Um, and obviously having cheap shot set up from the Rogue and then follow up blast damage from the Warlocks, it's going to be a great setup. I think both Warlock specs are performing great. If Subtlety isn't your thing, you want to still be an Assassination Rogue, this is a composition that I think you would still be totally fine. Uh, and Assassination has a lot of interesting legendaries that would synergize with Affliction where their bleeds and poisons start doing more damage the lower health the target is. So the Warlock softens up the target, and then the Assassination Rogue finishes them off. There could be some interesting synergies there to check out, which is why it's number six on my list here. Number five for the Restoration Druid is going to be the classic, and it's only number five, surprisingly enough. The the Mage Rogue, and I've listed pretty much every spec except Outlaw, although I think if you wanted to make it work and you had an Outlaw Rogue friend, you could, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Like Just because you could make it work doesn't mean I'm going to recommend it, but in this case, I've listed all of the Mage specializations. I think that this is a composition that can work with all of the Mage specializations. Frost is likely going to be the most consistent. Uh, fire... Uh, and arcane are going to kind of fit in their own niche fire is going to be a lot more about like three two one go uh, although all of them will be um, but fire will be dependent on their cooldowns and whether or not they can reset their combustion whereas frost is going to have a lot more on demand um, and you're going to be a lot more annoying with your slows which means that the rogues don't need to run crippling poison they can run mind numbing which is very powerful so in my mind frost mage is going to enable the rogue to get a lot more extra utility you're going to have a lot more damage more often but but Arcane would be really good for defense. Fire would be just good for really all-in, big, bursty damage. Um, but my recommendation would be the Frost Subtlety Resto Druid. Number four, we've got the Wizard Cleaves coming in now. We've got the Elemental Shaman Warlock, the staple, the classic LSD composition elemental affliction or destruction in my mind and this is a composition that elemental shamans are likely to love as well as restoration druids because unstable affliction will help protect the flame shocks of the shaman which is kind of the main downside at the moment is that their flame shock is a cooldown and can be removed frequently but unstable affliction does a ton of damage when removed and a healer doesn't really want to dispel flame shock and then lose over half their health to remove unstable affliction another benefit of this composition is a legendary for affliction warlocks that makes their corruption basically a permanent slow this is something that this comp was lacking in the past was the ability to slow targets now with curse of exhaustion amplify curses as well as frost shock and on top of this with a legendary targets are going to rot and wither uh, with this composition if you want to go for a blast and burst version of it, then destruction, I think, is still a viable option, especially with the Restoration Druid. Um, the stationary nature of the class is going to synergize well with the Restoration Druid. There's high priority targets, so this is going to be a comp as a Druid that's a little bit easier to heal because you won't have to deal with interrupts. Your Elemental Shaman and your Warlock need to be interrupted, which means you'll be able to heal more easily. That's why it's a, a higher ranking on my list. I think overall it will be more powerful, and I'm very curious to try it. 
Number three, we've got the Mage Warlock. If anyone thought it was going anywhere after BFA, well, no, it's not. It's still going to be an amazing composition, and I've listed a couple options here. Um, in my mind, Fire is going to need stuns, and that's why I only listed it with the Rogue. It's going to be about powering down a target with combustion, and its damage outside of that is like non-existent. So with this, I think you need more sustained damage or more control. So I think Arcane could work well with Affliction. You've got Affliction to bring in the slows, but if you wanted to bring in Frost and Affliction, Warlock could play a different Legendary rather than the Corruption slow, maybe a Gateway, where they get two charges of their Demonic Gateway, which would be really annoying for anyone trying to chase a Frost Mage and an Affliction Warlock with Demonic Circle and Alter Time and Shimmer and two Gateway charges. This is a composition that, again, melee cleaves are going to cower and just scream. It's going to have heavy pressure. It has the option to flip between... Uh, single target burst as well as rotten wither as well as just control the healer or maybe even swap to the healer mirrors of torment for the mage is the venthyr as a lockdown silence and stun is very powerful at the moment uh, and healers won't want to dispel it because the warlock will have unstable affliction on the target they have to take a risky gamble with that this is still going to be a very strong composition for the rest of druid moving in at number two we've got the shadow priest and the warlock shadow priest i would in my mind a little bit of a cut above uh, the mage specifically. And this is another just rot and wither. Uh, the warlock with this will definitely want to play the slow legendary as affliction in this composition. Still destruction as an option. Remember, just because everybody's talking about affliction doesn't mean that Destro went anywhere. It's still really good uh, coming off the back of Battle for Azeroth. And this is a great composition again for efflorescence on the rest of Druid to keep their healing mushroom on the ground and healing the stationary targets as they kind of blast away their enemies. You can get away with feral affinity in these wizard cleaves as well because it's going to be very hard to attack the resto druid so if you want to play that heart of the wild build with the feral affinity and get in there with some cat damage and stun targets these are going to be the compositions that you're going to want to go after and coming in at number one who would have expected this shadow priest rogue we take the two s tier specializations we slap them on the same team and you got the best comp for your class now uh, resto druid i think might not be the best healer for this but it's a resto druid list and i think this is the best comp for the resto druid just insane setup potential sapping off of mind bombs resetting swapping to healers you can be, be all over the place it's a very durable composition with conduits on the rogue making their slice and dice heal and with shadow priest being very durable now with devouring plague being able to cast into the same target again so you get two stacks effectively of the devouring plague that are healing you i mean this is just a very durable comp where if you want to be a cyclone druid or of like a high skill cap druid i think that this will enable you a lot it's gonna be super fun to play it's very powerful that's why it's number one on my list and i hope you enjoyed the video here i hope it was informative or got you kind of thinking about what friends you need to start be making what classes should they be playing moving into shadowlands i hope you enjoyed the video please leave it a like if you did comment down below with your thoughts and any compositions that you think should have made the cut here on the top 10 please subscribe to the channel if you like this content i'm uploading shadowlands content every single day and other than that check out my other videos i'll have them listed above class recommendations tier lists class reviews if you want to dive into detail and really see the nitty gritty of anything specifically i've got it if you want more summary oriented stuff on the tier list we got it it's all here everything to do with shadowlands thank you again very much for watching and i will see you in the next video